This right here in the background is my Swedish meatball launcher that I ended up building in the new Sprocket update. It was kind of interesting to do because trying to fit the actual people inside of this thing was a bit of a challenge and at the end of the day we ended up chopping off this guy's knees in order to actually squeeze him in. Today's video is going to be about building a three-man tank. It's going to be kind of interesting because trying to fit three people into a tank is um, going to be a little bit hard to do. But uh, if you guys have seen NM22, it is a three-person tank. One is the driver in the driver's seat and two are in the turret. Don't know how we're going to do that, but let's get to building. Okay, so this is the current situation. We have ourselves a, a box. <laughs> we also have a steering wheel. We also have some tracks and a transmission and an engine, I suppose. We also have that too. What we're going to do is try and figure out how to work this out. Um, in my head, I'm thinking one transmission would be really cool. Uh, if we were doing like clutch braking, that'd be awesome. And then turning the engine on its side would also be a really cool idea, which is something that I might actually do. So maybe we could have a sideways engine at the back. Anyway, what I need to do is essentially squidge this down. So let's start by squidging the tracks. Okay, so what I've done here is I've actually squidged them in a little bit. I've also made them skinnier because that makes sense. And overall, I've actually changed the shape of it as well. So we've got a bigger wheel at the front and a small sprocket at the back. Overall, I actually think that looks pretty good. And that is what we are going to be keeping. So let's go to faces and squidge this in from here and try and work this out. Also, I do want to say, what is your favorite small tank? I don't know <laughs> how to classify small tank. But yes, what is your favorite small tank? Let me know in the comments down below. Okay, so what I'm thinking I do from here is I actually raise this up all the way to the top right there and I'm essentially just going to be copying uh, the shape of the tracks with the shape of the body of the, the vehicle. I think that's going to end up looking pretty good. So let's do that. All right, so there you go. I've rounded off the front edge and it's looking pretty nice. What I'm going to do from there is move the steering wheel into the actual tank because that makes sense. And I think I'm also going to somewhat extend this down. So I'm going to just use the actual bottom of this to extend it down and that seems pretty good at the back I actually want to make it look a little bit better so I am actually gonna extrude this again drag it backwards to there and I'm gonna go ahead and send this guy upwards like this I think that generally makes it look nicer so that's why I've done it there you go Okay, so let's go ahead and start building onto the sides of this. I decided that I wanted to actually make it a little bit skinnier and then make it fatter again just so that we can have these little pieces on the side. I think the back ends generally look better when you do that. I then head to the back end and I'm like, I need to hide this engine somewhere. So I end up actually extruding this, making it go higher, adding some little edges to there so that we can have the exhausts on the side and then trying to figure it out from there. I then decided I wanted to extend it forwards because reasons. Um, we needed a space for the turret to actually go and this seemed like the best way of doing it. I then extrude that forwards because that makes sense and I make it all a little bit taller just to give us enough room. Extending it out over the tracks also gives us a little bit more room which is awesome. All right, so let's see how big an actual person is. There you go. You see, it does look kind of big until you actually try and fit an actual man into it. Then it starts looking pretty small. Uh, we're going to need a pretty big, um, what do you call it? A pretty big turret ring. So I kind of don't want this guy to be anywhere near this, but he has to be. He just has to be. So let's lower him down as far as we can. Feet forward is what we're going to do next. We're going to have him be pretty much laid down, I think. Sit angle, he's going to be sat backwards like this. There we go, and... I mean, that's interesting. <laughs> that's interesting so far. What if his sit, sit angle was up a bit, and then we actually angle him as a whole backwards just a little bit? So we'll put the driver's view up here still, but the steering wheel is going to be in the center. Although, actually, the more I think about this, what if we just move this guy off to the side? That could work too. So let's just go ahead and shove him this side. Just like that. There we go. Steering wheel right in the center. Let's go ahead and try and put this in a better position. There we go. And we can go with that, I think. All right, so this is the current situation we find ourselves in. Our gears are actually on the outside of the vehicle. Not really where they're going to stay. The driver is on the inside, however, he can't see anything. And um, it's looking pretty cool. Let me know in the comments as well. 
Uh, what do you think this currently looks like? I'm not sure, but it's reminding me of something. All right, so what I'm going to do now is go to compartments. We're going to grab ourselves a turret and we're going to try and slap it directly onto there. It does fit. It actually does fit. Um, trying to fit two people into there might be a bit more of an issue. And in fact, what we need to do is... Oh, no. <laughs> I need to make a hole in this. So I'm actually going to delete that guy, this guy. And I'm going to try and attach this piece to this piece, to this piece, to that piece. Phil, there we go. The turret ring needs to go in there. There we go. And if I could make that a little bit bigger, I would. So let's go ahead and do this. And this. Okay, that turret ring actually looks pretty good. Now we just need to add a turret to it <laughs> and fit it in there properly. I don't know whether this is going to work out. So grab the actual ring, shove it backwards until it's in, and there we go. I mean, it does somewhat fit, I suppose. Interesting. Okay, so I took a quick break because I was like, maybe I could come up with a turret design that I actually really like, and honestly, I haven't actually come up with one. I'm thinking we go with a flat front face, and then we go with a rounded back like we pretty much always do. Okay, so unfortunately for me, that is not actually what we get up to here. In fact, this turret is one that I do end up deleting because I figured it was actually pretty difficult to get the shape that I wanted. However, in the end, I did come up with a turret that was actually pretty cool um, after deleting this. Also, I did add a driver in there uh, that does drive it around, which is pretty sick. But um, yeah, he got in the way of the turret ring, which is obviously a bit of an issue. In fact, it's actually a massive issue. So sorting that out was a good idea. Um, right here, I'm trying to merge this all together to try and make it look a little bit nicer. But I just didn't see a way of actually reusing this turret once I'd finished with this stuff. So, yeah. I deleted it. I actually deleted it. I hated it. I think it looked really, really bad. So I'm going to have to come up with a different design. Let's go ahead and try and time-lapse one. Okay, so this is where we actually come up with the design that we ended up using in the end. Uh, honestly, I think the easiest way to actually get a turret out of this is to take the turret that they give you and then just split it into a bunch of different pieces in order for this to work. Also, I really need to find the select all button because there isn't one right now, or at least there doesn't seem to be one right now. And selecting all would actually be really, really good and really useful. Uh, in this kind of situation because I'm not sure if the turret's too big for this tank or if it fits properly I'm not sure but uh, at the end of the day. I think it ended up looking pretty pretty nice uh, Right here. I'm extending it backwards because more space the better inside the turret uh, From this point. I was like, maybe we could open the top, but I decided against that in the end I think closing the top was definitely a good option um, But yeah, look at that looks pretty sick also making it a little bit more squat did make sense as well, but overall, pretty cool, right? Okay, so this is where we are at. Uh, I don't know whether this is where I want it to be, to be totally honest with you guys. I feel like this turret looks a little bit strange, uh, but I guess from the side, it looks somewhat okay. From the front, I feel like it looks kind of ugly, and the back, I don't know. I, I just think it's very weird. So we're going to go with it anyway, but if we want to change it in the future, I suppose we can. Anyway. Uh, let's go ahead and add a mantlet to this and go from there. Okay, so there's the mantlet right there. We are going to be pushing this backwards through there in a second, but first we need to actually add the cannon. So let's go ahead and try and shove this under here. Yes. Currently, this gun is a 105mm gun. We're going to make it a 76mm gun, which is still quite big, to be fair. It's still quite a large, a large gun. Uh, let's go ahead and lower this down to the center of there. In fact, actually, maybe it should be like 37 instead. 37 millimeters, there we go. Oh, maybe even 57, because 37 is too small. 57 right there, excellent. Propellant length is going to be like 200. Yes, and then we're going to move this backwards into there, just like this. Yeah, I guess the cannon itself then needs moving backwards. I don't know how this works. So we grab the cannon itself, we send this backwards through there. There we go. And then I think we're just going to have to like increase the amount of parts it has. So recoil segments, we're going to go ahead and push those out. Propellant length is already there. 
So I think that's what we're gonna go with. Okay, so making the gun this small makes sense, and the main reason for that is because we need to fit two guys into the turret. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a person. There we go, we're gonna make them both sit all the way up, I think. So, yeah, I don't know how this is gonna go, but sure. Uh, standing angle? Oh, sorry, sit angle. We're gonna make that zero, and this is a fully standing man. We're then gonna do the same thing with that guy, although actually, let's just do one at a time. So if this guy is on the inside, let's go ahead and shove him down in there, just sort of like that, I suppose. Uh, we need to make sure he actually fits, and at the minute, he doesn't. Like, there's no way he fits in here. So, let's go ahead and either have him angle forwards, like that, or we're gonna have to have him, like, crouched. This is awful. Imagine being this guy in this tank. Yikes, you just crouched all the time. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. Anyway, this guy is gonna be the gunner, so he's gonna be the traverse drive and the lane drive. Actually, we don't, oh no, we do need a traverse drive. Holy, and then we need a, a cannon operator as well. So he's gonna do like three jobs. So you can actually aim this from side to side. That's totally working. You know what? I guess I'm fine with that. Sure. And then we need another dude, which is essentially the same guy. There we go, just like this. And we need him to fit. So his right arm in. There we go, as far as we can. We're gonna raise him up slightly. His left arm is gonna come in as well. There we go, and... We just need him to fit. Hey, there we go. So we got two guys in the turret. One is gonna be the loader. There we go. The other guy is doing all of the other stuff for the turret, and that's it. Okay, we got a three-man tank with three men in it. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, next thing that I want to do then is work on the engine. So we're going to actually make this a really big engine. Twelve cylinders is insane, but sure. We're then going to actually ram this forwards. I need to turn both of them. So grab both. Spin them both that way. Okie dokie. And then we're gonna push them both into... What the... The hell? Alright, I don't know what's going on here. Undo. Right. I need to, like, twist them both around. Because I'm having issues at the minute. This is really weird. <laughs> this is really strange. Anyway, what we should be able to do is bring this in. There we go. I'm gonna push them to the side of the engine. There we go. And then obviously this needs to go back here like, like it already is. I don't know how to do that. Unless I split these. So if I split that piece right there, we should be able to... Hang on, let's do it on both sides. Hold on, one second. Split this one as well. Grab that guy and that guy. Do this. And then do this. And then with these guys, I'm gonna have to move this one in, so it's inside the tank. And then this one in, again, so it's inside the tank. And that guy's gonna have to move out to the side. All right. We're good, so now it currently works, which is awesome. Uh, I do need to drag the engine itself forwards, which then means I need to drag this guy forwards. Which then means I probably need to drag these guys, uh, not the engine, and these guys forwards, so that everything actually fits. There we go. Oh yeah! Alright, I'm happy with that. This guy does need to go inwards a little bit though, because I can currently see it on the outside. And I think the other one's fine. Almost. Alright, yeah, perfect. Okay, so where is the fuel tank gonna go? Well, let's go ahead and figure that out next. So powertrain, fuel tanks. Uh, let's go ahead and grab one of these big boxes. Only gonna add one. Shove it into there, obviously. And now we need it to be the right size so that it will actually work. Let's go ahead and squat it down a little bit. Push it up, bring it backwards. A massive flammable fuel tank is gonna go right next to the driver. <laughs> on the frontal armor, because that makes sense, right? Okay, from there, we're gonna go ahead and add some ammunition. Oh, the ammo in this is actually not as small as you'd expect. Interesting, but yes, we're gonna go ahead and shove it into there. Unfortunately, obviously, the back end is rounded off a little bit. So this is a little bit more sketch than maybe it should be. That's fine. Go ahead and ramp it up. There we go. We've got... How many rounds is that? 15 rounds right there. Okay, we're then gonna go to the inside. And I'm gonna try and line up some rounds along here as well. So shove that onto there. 
Drop this all the way down so it's only one. Can I fit those in? I don't know whether this will work. So send it backwards. Off to the side. Yeah, I can't fit them there. Unless I put them behind. Which in that situation, I think it will work. Here we go. Bring it upwards. Nice. Yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to scoot it out to the side even further. And that's probably enough. There we go. So we've got an extra seven rounds on that side. Seven rounds on this side. And 15 rounds up there. That's a lot of rounds. Oh, wait. They're not even the right size, are they? Yeah, this is from the other gun. So this is what they actually look like. Yes, interesting. So now they all look like this. We've now got 54 rounds up there, 14 here, 14 there. And we should be able to shoot. Sick! That's awesome. Okay, so what I'm going to do now then is add a bunch of detail to the outside, try and make it look a little bit nicer, and then we'll see what it's like in the end. Okay, so uh, I've done quite a lot to this, and this is the situation we are currently in. It'd be awesome if I actually had rivets and stuff like that, but unfortunately that's not something we actually do have access to. So, we are going to uh, just extend this guy, because I just seen it and I was like, yes, that'd be cool. Uh, although that has just disappeared and now... I don't know where it went. <laughs> it literally just disappeared. I can't actually, like, uh, get it back. Anyway, uh, I will actually be putting that back on there and... I don't know, I guess we're gonna go for a drive. Uh, the other thing is, I do want to change the way that it looks, so we're gonna go with metallicness, yes. Uh, a little bit less, actually, let's go ahead and try and make it quite bright. Here we go. So, I want this to be like, green. Alright, and not blue, so green, yep, definitely green. Uh, I wanted it to be like, darker though. Ooh, I don't know, so actually, if we go like this, I think that's not the right color, not yet. Still not quite the right color, more green, more red, and more blue. Yeah, I really struggle with finding the colors that we need, but anyway, we're gonna go with that. I'm also gonna give it a little bit of grime, and the condition is gonna be a little bit worse than normal. There we go. Honestly, I think that's pretty sick. So, let's go ahead and drive. We'll drive straight over a ramp. We'll see what kind of jobs the enemy, the enemy? Uh, the guys on board can actually do. And we'll go from there. So, the gunner, let's go ahead and fire around. Pew! Can I turn the gun? Yes, I can. He's also getting reloaded anyway. Can I aim up and turn the gun at the same time? Yes! And I can fire again. Awesome! It's actually working out quite nicely. Let's go over this ramp right here. Ah, oh, yeah! So, have we successfully... Whoa! Have we successfully built a three-man tank? I think so. And honestly, there's loads of room left. I've made it too big, I think. Alright, so there we go. I've added that little thing to the side again, and honestly, I think this looks pretty good. What I'm gonna do, though, is I'm gonna go back to paint, and I think I'm gonna give it, like, a, a normal camouflage. Don't know how that's gonna go, but let's see. So, 50% on there, 50% on here, and 50% on there. Awesome, that's all sort of correct. I don't mind it. Oh, maybe it's 100%. 100%, 100%, 100%? Yes, I suppose it is. Saturation could come down a little bit. So there we go. It looks like it's in black and white. That's actually really awesome looking. Let's go ahead and make this a Japanese tank instead. So we'll go to decals. Yes, Japanese flag is going to go right here. And I'm also going to add a little one on the front. I think that looks sick. Yeah. And that's really cool. Alright, so you might have noticed there is one thing missing, or at least multiple things missing, maybe, probably, but one most importantly uh, is that we are actually missing armor on this thing. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to go around and add some armor. Now, it's not really going to be very much because, honestly, I kind of only want it to be like 30 mil uh, maximum. So let me go through each of these places where we need armor and add 30 mil in certain areas, and, I don't know, like 20 in others. Let's do this. And there we are, we have very, very limited armor on this thing because it is a light tank and it has three guys inside. I actually want to go through a few of the things inside this thing because sometimes we don't actually get chance to do so. So, what kind of gun does it have? Well, it's got a 57mm cannon and apparently it doesn't actually have a sight, but we've gone ahead and attached it to it. Uh, down below, inside, we've actually got an engine, obviously, so let's go inside and have a little look at that. 
It is a 12 cylinder 1.5 litre per cylinder engine. That is absolutely massive. We've then got gears, uh, starting at gear 1 with 6, then down to 2.5, down to 1.5, and down to 1. It only has one reverse gear, which actually, we should probably change into 2, to be fair. So let's go ahead and do that. And we actually have, like, 54 rounds up there. We have 14 rounds down here, 14 rounds on the other side. We have three crew members, as you guys can see, one being the driver down here, in order for him to get out, um, <laughs> he'd have to squeeze through this little door right here, if you guys can see that. So, in order for him to actually be able to get to that, I'm going to limit the amount of fuel we actually have, and push that over to the side. There we go. So now, he can actually climb out through this hatch on the front, right here. There is a hatch. Cool. Other things that we have is a gun mounted to the top, a machine gun. We've also got a machine gun mounted into the turret as well. Down on the back, we have trench crossing stuff right there. Engine stuff is on the back as well, including exhausts. And we got some stowages on the side. Overall, I really like the design. I think it might be slightly too big, so we might end up making something smaller in the future. But I really like it. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. Goodbye.